Welcome to Webcast 51. One of the topics we haven't talked about yet is email and spam and how IPv6 affects them both. If you made it past the administrator level of your HE IPv6 certification, then you already have some familiarity in configuring a mail server with IPv6. In order to address the issue of spam, we have three basic modes of attack. The first is to create laws and policies that govern the legitimate email marketers and to use law enforcement to take care of the illegitimate guys. This is preventative care to discourage or stop spam from being sent at all. The second is more reactionary than preventative. It involves using spam filters to analyze a message and might include language filters, content filters, user filters, or header filters. The third method is refusing to accept an email based on its originating IP address when it's presented for delivery or relay. This includes whitelisting and blacklisting, which together eliminate an estimated 90% of spam. With IPv4, this is an acceptable solution. Lists are monitored and updated by various spam organizations. With IPv6, it gets a little difficult. With over a trillion, trillion, trillion addresses to attend to, there's almost no point in keeping a list of dirty addresses. If we use a whitelist and refuse everything not listed there, it makes it hard to add a new organization or even a new server, so IP reputation with IPv6 is nearly impossible. One suggestion by John Levine discussed in his Politically Incorrect Guide to IPv6 is to keep email on IPv4 for a while. He gives three good reasons. Mail doesn't need a lot of IP addresses, it doesn't need end-to-end -end connections, and he thinks email is tough to move to IPv6. Hurricane Electric's Owen DeLong disagrees. He generally recommends people move SMTP to IPv6 early on, stating that gray listing, black hole lists, and filters can be effective spam management for a dual stack mail server. Regardless of which side you choose, it remains that there are options in dealing with spam as we continue the global transition to IPv6.